it's Monday, and is it still good? Let's find out. What is going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the i7 5500U. This is an i7 that was found in many laptops over the past few years. It's a Broadwell based CPU that only has about two cores and four threads. The reason being, although it's an i7 that it has that, well, because laptops, users, Intel doesn't care about us. You know what? They literally do not care about us. I'm serious. They literally do not put any quad cores into a laptop unless you want to spend an arm and a leg. So hopefully AMD, you know what? You got a Ryzen out there. Come on, quad core APUs, you know, get those out there. Because seriously, Intel better be scared. And they might have to go all quad core eventually because if you got quad core APUs that are beating out your dual cores, well, GG Intel. But anyways, let's actually talk about the CPU now. All right. In terms of Cinebench, well, the score was about 90-something, but listen, the actual score that you get is 271. That score, the 91, was when I was running a bunch of programs such as Skype and other stuff in the background, but in reality, it's pretty high. The thing is equivalent to about a quad-core Phenom, which means it's still a kind of decent CPU. I'm going to go more in-depth in just a second. First, let's take a look at CSGO. Now, good old CSGO over here. I'm using the FPS that I got from my Radeon M265, that is the dedicated GPU that I have in here. And to be honest, it can run very easy most games, honestly. The iGPU in here is also pretty strong. You guys can look back at a few videos where I have the Intel HD graphics that is found inside of this thing being tested. That was the three generations of Intel HD graphics tested video, which I will have at the end of the video linked if you guys want to go and check that out. If you're curious about the iGPU. Now, in terms of the actual CPU itself, well, gaming, it's not honestly that bad, I guess you could say. I mean, it still handles most games, but if you go into more intensive stuff, not saying StarCraft, but I'm talking about, like, Battlefield 1 or stuff, or other games. No matter what resolution you set it to, you might have issues with your CPU. You're going to notice a bunch of slowdowns and stuff, blah, 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 all that jimmer jammer when your CPU just can't keep up. Now, in terms of older games, the thing is actually really good because it has a very high single thread performance. As I said before, it is equivalent to a quad core Phenom, but that's only on two cores, which is wonderful because that means your single threaded is basically two Phenom cores. So it's great when it comes to playing older games that required a lot of single threaded games or games that are not optimized because the developer is like, let's just put everything on one thread because why not? What's the point of multi threading? Seriously, guys, I don't see a point of that. Also, a cool little feature about this thing is, as I mentioned previously, it has four threads, but only two cores, which means it is hyper-threaded. That's right. There's another thing that Intel does. It's like, hey, you want four threads? We'll give it to you. We'll just give you two cores, and we'll give them a little more extra, a little pipeline space for that extra thread. And there we go. You got a quad core. Oh, my God. All right. So here's a little fun little fact. I was uh, talking over my video, and it seems I've got a red screen. That is right. I have a red screen on my editing right now. Good job, PC. Great job. Okay. I am at a red screen. I have no idea how much time is left on the video to do this voiceover. So God. Okay. Let's restart the PC and maybe we could figure this out. So hold on. Oh, my God. All right. Anyways, let's talk about a few other things. First off, the video editing. Video editing in terms of doing 1080p stuff is definitely doable. 1080p 60 gets a little stuttery, but it's still very good. You move it on to 4K, you better be a patient man. You better be a very patient person when it comes to the CPU because 4K rendering, Jesus, even at 30 FPS, it is stuttery. You are not going to be able to do live rendering. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to move around. Lightworks keeps freezing up. Sony Vegas, I did test out a little bit, not much on the CPU, I used to have it years ago, and honestly it wasn't that great when it comes to 4K stuff, 1080p or lower, you know what, you're doing good, but other than that, it is horrible, alright, let's see, computer's back on, hopefully we still have a bunch of time to keep talking, but yeah, by the way, if you're trying to do 4K FPS, don't do it, don't even try it, don't even think about it, seriously, 120 FPS, 4K, you just get out of town, it's still gonna crash your computer every single time. But yeah, rendering's definitely doable, guys. It's just you're going to have to lower your settings. And you can't do crazy stuff. Like if you're doing video and video and light works and stuff, God, that is a pain. It's going to be stuttery. If you do a voiceover, it's going to come out horrible because it's going to stutter because light works is stupid in that way. But most video editing software, 4K, you're going to have an issue with this CPU probably. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the iGPU, by the way, is pretty decent. And you can go ahead and check out my other videos on that. But do I tell you video editing? No, it's the best thing ever. Gaming, pretty decent. Um, in terms of general, you know, doing stuff like Chrome and stuff, it is blazing fast. That is thanks to the high single thread performance that it has compared to other quad cores from AMD and stuff, which please rise and come out already with the APUs. We need it until be more competitive already. But yeah, it's pretty quick when it comes to the other stuff. And just in general, honestly, it's 
a decent CPU. If you're going for modern games, guys, it is a bit behind. It's not the greatest thing in the world. If you're talking about video editing, definitely doable. You just gotta be a patient person. Your videos aren't gonna render in one second, by the way, that will take some time. In terms of your little, like, you know, Chrome and all that stuff, and your web browsing, your email browsing, you don't need more than an Atom. So, of course, it's gonna be good. But yeah, in general, guys, if you still can get a used laptop with this thing, it is still pretty good for a laptop. It's not a quad core, but it's decent in that sense. If you can get a new laptop with one of these things, well, what are you doing? Why are there even new laptops with this thing? I mean, come on, we're already two generations ahead, or about to be three generations ahead. Oh my god, this thing's actually old. I just paid a thousand bucks for this laptop like two years ago. Jesus. Don't buy expensive computer parts. They age way too quick. Huh. <sighs> Anyways, have a great day. See you later.